Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Parameter Estimation. And we're going to do a couple videos on Bayesian theory to estimate parameters. But I need a couple background videos, and this is one of them. And we're going to look at the prior and posterior distributions in Bayesian analysis. Now, there's two main theories in statistics on how to estimate unknown parameters. And in the Essentially, you assume that the parameters are constant, and that's called frequentist theory, or the parameters are random, and that's Bayesian theory. And I'm sure there's little different theories when each of those, but those are the only two possibilities, right? The parameter's constant or the parameter's random. And here, we're, this video focuses on Bayesian analysis. Now, a prior distribution is, this represents our beliefs about the unknown theta, and remember, it's random, so it follows the distribution. And we assume that, that theta is random and it follows the distribution. Uh, no data has been collected at this point, and theta can be discrete or continuous, but we have to assume that it follows some sort of distribution. And then there's ways to assume, you know, like non-informative priors and you know flat priors, and there's all sorts of fancy techniques on how to develop this prior. But you have to have it. You have to have prior belief. Uh, the likelihood or joint probability density or probability mass function is uh, it's the mechanism that which we collect the data. So we have a random sample from this joint distribution or this likelihood, which in vector form it's this. And then since our data are independent, it's just a product of the marginals. Now, but remember that this is dependent upon a theta. Now, if we want the distribution of just the x's not dependent upon theta, then that's what's called a marginal joint PDF, and we just call it G of our data. Uh, and often you put an N there to illustrate that it's from a sample of size N. Now, as a reminder, we assume the data or random. So it follows some, I mean, not the data, the parameter is random and follows some sort of distribution and the theta is in omega and that's the parameter space, that's where it lives. So to get a uh, marginal distribution of x, we can take the joint density between our data and the parameter theta and integrate out theta, integrate out overall possibilities and that leaves x, our, di our dens joint density for just x. But using probability theory, you can replace it with this, right? This is a conditional distribution of f, f of x given theta times theta. That's this joint distribution. And here we know this. That's our prior distribution, and that is the, uh, the joint PMF that we're collecting our data from. So we can calculate this marginal joint PDF for our data. Now the posterior distribution, this represents our updated beliefs about the unknown parameter of theta after collecting data. And we denote it by P of theta given X. Now remember up here, the prior was just P of theta. But now we've collected data and we want to know about theta. Okay, And you do that by this way. So the probability of theta given X Using probability theory is this, it's the joint probability divided by the marginal of x. Well this, using probability theory, is this. So it's the prior distribution times the joint, um, or the, you know, the likelihood function divided by x. So this is how we calculate the posterior distribution. And again, theta is random and we assume it lives in the parameter space omega. Now, there's a term that we're going to throw around a little bit, and I want to define it, and that's family. And a family is a collection of distributions. Call it f of x given theta. Now, by varying all the possible values of theta in omega, where omega is the parameter space, it creates a family. So this distribution, given theta, you know, is a distribution. But if we put in a different value for theta, it's a different distribution. So if we vary all the possible values of theta, we create what's called a family of distributions. 
Um, next, the term conjugate prior. It's when the samples are taken from some likelihood or from some distribution, and the prior and posterior distributions are from the same family. Then it's called a conjugate prior. So we have uh, three little theorems to prove in regards to conjugate priors, and then we'll call it quits for this video. But here, the gamma distribution is a conjugate prior when the samples are taken from a Poisson distribution. So the conjugate prior is a gamma for the Poisson distribution. So that means the prior and the posterior from a gamma distribution. And let's, and let's show that. So let's let our data be IID uh, Poisson. Then our likelihood function is just a product of the marginals, which is this. Now, in Bayesian analysis, we often get rid of the constants. So remember, we're interested in the, uh, lambda. So the x's are considered constants. So if we get rid of this x, then this is proportional to this. And these are the terms that have a lambda in it. These are the important information. Now, when I, um, yeah, when I first started doing this, I used to just keep all the constants and drive that marginal joint PDF for the data and you know, and make sure it was always correct, and that we'd drive the distribution, and and it and that got and it it always worked out, <laughs> and so then you get tired of doing it, so then you just you you drop it and call it proportional, and then at the end it, it always looks like a distribution that you know that you know, and if not, you can go back and figure out the needed constants, and so it's just easier to drop those, so it's proportional to this. Now the prior distribution is a gamma distribution but again we're interested in the lambda so we drop the constants and we say it's proportional to this now the joint or the posterior distribution of lambda given our data is is proportional to the prior times the likelihood oh and i and i have this reverse so this first piece is the likelihood and this second piece is the prior and then when you multiply it you know you combine the E's, combine the lambdas, and you get this. But this is the form of a gamma distribution without the constants. So if we were to carry all the constants and do that integration, it would end up the, with the appropriate constants, and we'd go, oh, that's exactly a gamma. But here, we know it's gamma-like without the constants, so we say, yeah, we know it's a gamma. So this is, it follows a gamma distribution with alpha this and, you know, in beta in quotes, n plus beta. It's a distribution without the normalizing constant g n of x. Okay. So uh, theorem two, the beta distribution is a conjugate prior when samples are taken from a Bernoulli distribution. So this is the likelihood function for a Bernoulli. This is our prior distribution follows a beta and notice the constants are out front that's where we say proportional to and then so the posterior distribution is the prior times the likelihood so this times that and you combine the exponents on the p and the exponents on one minus p and you get this well this looks like a beta distribution of course without the constants but since it's a distribution, we know that it has to have the appropriate constants. So this is a beta distribution. With this is, you know, in quotes the alpha, and in quotes that's the the beta. Okay. So so one more for this video. Um, a, the normal distribution is the conjugate prior when the samples are taken from a normal distribution with known variances. So in in this example we're going to assume the variances are, are known. So our prior distribution, of course, is proportional to this. And, oh, here's an interesting point that we'll make use of in the third step here. We're interested in mu, right? So these are constants. This is a constant. That's not. So if we were to multiply this out, we'd get mu squared minus 2 mu mu naught and then plus mu naught squared. So we could take that mu naught squared raised to the e and factor it out and then call it proportional to just what's left over. Now this is the uh, likelihood function that our data is collected from and it's proportional and we said it was normal with um, mean mu so that's this and again 
the x's are constant so if we were to square this we'd get xi squared minus 2xi mu plus mu squared but that xi squared we can factor out and make it go away so now when we look at the posterior distribution of mu given data it's the product of these but I remove that extra constant so here we have mu squared right mu squared and then the minus and then the two and then we have this times that that times that so we get two uh, mu naught mu and then take it times this and we come up with that so, but the mu naught squared has gone away that's why we call it proportional to here the xi squared goes away and we're left with the uh, mu squared which is this and then the that times this this times that and then we get this piece um, then we combine the mu squareds and the mu's or we factor them out and we get this um, now I want to like factor this piece out of both of these terms here and that's what we do here so we take this piece and factor it out so we're left with mu squared and then when we multiply this times this we're going to get this back right and I'll let you do the math on that but now we want to complete the square this is a constant so if we divide it by 2 and square it and then we add and subtract that quantity then we can square this term and the extra piece that we didn't need in this uh, completing the square since it's a constant we can factor it out and then we say this is proportional to this so everything else comes down here so the reciprocal of that you know the minus one and then we square we completed the square and squared it and then we got rid of the constants well this sure does look like a normal distribution right so if this is the random variable minus the mean that's squared minus one half and then that's the variance you know we're missing the constants but we could have kept them and derived it but it's just sure easier to leave them out so this is the variance and this is the mean so the normal is a conjugate prior when we're taking data from a normal distribution with known variances all right well that's all i have for this video hopefully you enjoyed that i sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye